to thank Brother Fisher for the wonderful selections this morning in preparing us uh, for our worship service and uh, just an absolutely fantastic job at praising the almighty God. I am looking for a robe, I'm looking for a mansion, and I am looking for a crown, and I surely hope uh, you are doing uh, the same thing. Now, I'm not talking about a earthly mansion. I'm not talking about an earthly crown. I'm not talking uh, about a uh, something that here on this earth, Brother Proctor, I'm talking about an eternal home where I will uh, live forever. I, I want you to know that the Hebrew writer said in Hebrews, the ninth chapter, verse number 27, it is appointed unto man once to die, and then after this, the judgment. Right. There are two things that are definitely going to happen in life. Number one, you and I are going to die. Right. And number two, you and I are going to be judged by the things that we've done on this time side of life. I am traveling on this journey from earth to heaven and I am trying to get my mansion, my robe, and my crown. And it ain't down here on this earth. I want you to know that everything that you have right now is going to burn up. Isn't that all right? Am I right about it, Brother uh, Brother Fisher? Everything that we have right now is going to burn up. I am looking for an eternal home, that country where no one dies. Uh, Brother Granger, there is uh, no more sorrow there. There is no more pain there. There is no more bills there. There is no more working there. It is nothing but rest and praise to the Almighty God who gave me the strength in my body today to be able to raise them out of my bed to be able to stand before this congregation and preach the unadulterated truth which is the word of God. I'm so glad, I'm so glad that you all chose to do the same thing that I chose to do on this morning and that was to come out and worship the own mighty God. Uh, so, so, so listen to our visitors. Uh, we're glad that you're here this morning. Uh, uh, we, we are so glad that you have uh, chose to come out to the East Side Church of Christ here in Lee Summit, Missouri, and to worship the Almighty God uh, the way he says uh, to worship. Uh, am I right about that, Brother Proctor? Because in John the fourth chapter, verse number 24, the Bible says that we ought to worship him in spirit and in truth. That simply means that our spirit has to come connect with the almighty God's spirit and that when we worship him it must be in spirit and when we worship him it must be true. It is the way that he has recorded in his word that you and I ought to worship him. So to our visitors, uh, we want you to know that you are our special guests. Uh, we want you to know the type of church that we are as well. We are a church which speaks where the Bible speaks. We are silent where the Bible is silent. We call Bible things by Bible name and we do Bible things uh, the Bible away. Isn't that all right? It's because the preacher ought to preach from the Bible. Am I right about that, Brother Proctor? Uh, that's what the preacher ought to do in, in, if we want folks to know what they must do in order uh, to be saved. So uh, we want you to know that we're glad to have you. Now, uh, let me tell you, the Spirit has been uh, working mightily. Uh, in this greater metropolitan area. Uh, we had a baptism on uh, last Friday, I believe it was. Uh, that baptism was uh, Brother Nathaniel Smock's uh, mother. She is now uh, Sister Williams. What's her first name? I, 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 forgive me for that. Teresa, Teresa uh, Williams. She was baptized uh, right here at the Eastside Church of Christ uh, on Friday uh, night, I believe around 1040, somewhere in that neighborhood. Uh, so another soul has been added to uh, the kingdom of God. And, and if I'm correct, uh, Brother Brother Hunt called me yesterday and said uh, that there was another baptism. I believe the last name is Cook. Uh, so we should be referring to her as our, our sister in Christ, Sister Cook. And I believe she is the uh, right back there in the back. She's uh, sitting all the way in the back and she's got her hand in the air. Uh, just uh, uh, praise God. Praise the almighty God. 
praise the almighty God. I believe, I believe, I believe that there is a fire and, and the fire has been rekindled. I, I believe that something is happening in this greater metroplex area uh, when it pertains to souls being uh, brought to Christ. And I believe that uh, what's going on is because of the folks that are right here in this congregation who has taken the word of God out and has uh, decided that uh, they're going to share it with others in this world. And that's all right. That's an amen. That's an amen. Uh, listen, uh, we've been dealing all this year out of the uh, sermon title or the sermon series, Where Is Your Faith? Uh, out of Luke, the 8th chapter, verse number uh, 22 to 25. And uh, I want you to know that there are sometimes, uh, Brother Fisher, that storms come in my life. I, I want you to know, uh, Brother Crutchfield, that there are times when storms come in my life. Brother Hunt, storms come. I, I want you to know that the, the boat will rock from side to side. This vessel, this ship uh, that uh, I'm in will sometime uh, rock from side to side. Sometime the ship will take on water. Uh, I began to get uh, nervous, uh, Brother Granger, at the fact that uh, the ship is starting to fill up uh, with water. I, I sometimes become frightened. I am fearful. I, I am scared. I am afraid of what is going to happen when the storm began to rock the ship from left to right and we began to go up and down and we began to take a water on and brother Parker I'm doing my very best to bail the water out as quickly as it is coming into uh, this earthly vessel I'm trying my very best Crutchfield I'm trying my very best brother Ralph and Boone I'm trying to get all of the water out of the ship out of this vessel out of this boat but I have forgotten one thing I've forgotten about the faith that I have in Jesus the Christ. I've forgotten about the fact that Jesus is the captain of this vessel. I've forgotten about the fact that in Luke the 8th chapter, verse number 22, Jesus said, let's go over uh, to the other side. And when Jesus is the captain of the vessel, and when Jesus said, let's go over to the other side, you better believe we can get to the other side. Now I want you to know that in getting to the other side, there are going to be some trials. Uh, there are going to be some strife. Uh, there are going to be some temptations. You know, uh, that old devil, uh, that old Satan, the tempter, the accuser of the brethren, he's going to tempt us and he's going to cause us to stumble along the way. But I want you to know all we got to do, Brother Jackson, is we just got to get up we just got to get up and keep on moving. Uh, we got to get up and understand that we are going to make it to the other side. So we have to have that trust. We have to have that confidence. And we must have that faith in the almighty God. So the question that begs to still be answered by every single person that is present today is where is your faith? Where does your faith lie? Who does your faith lie in? Church, we got to understand that in this vessel, we got the captain of the ship, and his name is Jesus the Christ. And I'm so glad, I'm so glad that I'm in the ship that I know is going to take me on, on up to glory. Am I right about it, Brother Fisher? I'm so glad that I'm in the ship, uh, the only ship, the only vessel, the only boat in the water that I know is going to take me on up to glory. I'm so glad that I'm in the church uh, that you can read about in the Bible. Brother Crutchfield, I'm so glad that I'm in the church that one can read about in the Bible. I'm so glad that I am in the body of Christ. I am so glad that I am in the church of Christ. I'm not ashamed. I'm there to not say it there, Brother Crutchfield. You know I stand boldly and courageously and flat foot it on the word of God and don't have a problem saying the word church of Christ. So we've been dealing with this subject matter all this year and we'll continue to deal with it the rest of this year and I'll, I want us to understand that somewhere along the line, somewhere along our journey, we have to answer this question. Listen to me. Listen to me. I need everybody's undivided attention this morning that I need for you to know that you've got to answer this question. Where is your faith? 
before 2017 is up. And I'm hoping and trusting and praying that the answer to your question will be that you lie and all your faith lies within Jesus to Christ. Not your husband, not your wife, not your grandmother, not your grandfather, not your pastor, not your elder, not your deacon, not your boss, not your work wife. Yeah, you know, some some men got work wives, they go, you know, they go to ask their work wives. There's no faith uh, that lies in there. So the question that begs to be answered, where is your faith? It has to lie in the almighty God. It doesn't lie in the politicians, uh, Brother Fisher. It does not lie in that former president by the name of Barack Obama. Uh, it does not lie in the present a president by the name of Donald Trump. It does not lie in the city council. It does not lie in the state representatives. It does not lie in the Senate, in the Senate and what they vote on or what they disagree to vote on. Our faith ought to lie in the almighty God. So as we continue on, on this Mother's Day, isn't it wonderful? I got to say happy Mother's Day to all of the mothers that are present on this day, all of the grandmothers. And before we leave this evening, I want you all up here, every single mother, every single grandmother, whether you be married or single, so we can get a picture of you. Uh, we want to put this on our Facebook uh, page. We want to put it on our, our website. Uh, we've got a lot of activity that has happened over the past month. And man, every time I jump onto the Facebook page or every time I jump onto the East Side uh, website, I see something new, something different. Uh, something exciting. Baptisms uh, are taking place. Revivals are taking place. Studies are taking place. Brother Crutchfield uh, spent many hours with a gentleman uh, from a different denomination and he uh, uh, was just showing him uh, what the word of God speaks and nothing else. So uh, lots of things are going on with this congregation and I, I, I feel that there has been a renewing. I, I feel that there is a rejuvenation that has taken place uh, at this congregation and I'm so happy and I'm so pleased to serve all of you who are present uh, on this day and those that are members uh, of this Eastside uh, Church of Christ. So um, uh, we want to get a picture of all the mothers. So you know, just look around. None of us would be here if it wasn't for the fact that they were the mother. <clears throat> Is that all right? Yeah, Brother Jackson, you wouldn't be here if it wasn't for your mother. You got to remember that. Yeah, that's right. Brother Proctor, uh, you wouldn't be here if it wasn't for your mama. Nobody would be here if it wasn't for my mama, if it wasn't for our mamas. So uh, we ought to praise them. We ought to uplift them. We ought to honor them every single day. And I'm here to tell you, uh, there's a big gigantic card back there in the back that says Happy Mother's Day. That is from the Wallace family. It's, it's to every single mother, grandmother that's present here, uh, whether you be a member of the Church of Christ or whether you you are visiting uh, with us. We want you to sign that card too uh, when you get a chance. So after we take this beautiful picture of all these wonderful mothers here, uh, we want you to sign uh, that card as uh, well. So let's get into this morning's lesson. Uh, let's turn our Bibles to 2 Timothy, the first chapter. And I want to thank Brother Hoover for uh, reading uh, this text into your hearing this morning. 1 Timothy the first chapter, verse number one through six. Verse number one through six. <clears throat> Church, my arm is already tired. I'm not used to holding this microphone and it's heavy too. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. All right. So first, or second Timothy, the first chapter, verse number one through six, the Bible read. It reads, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God, according to the promise of life which is in 
Christ Jesus. I'm going to stop for just a second. Uh, I need one of the brothers, if you will, to, uh, we have some guests that are sitting right back here in the back, and if someone could uh, please assist in showing them where they can peruse through the word of God and get that uh, chapter, that verse, the verses that we are trying to read. I, I want them to be able to follow along with us as well. It's uh, 2 Timothy, the first chapter, verse number 1, through six and brother smocks is going to get that for them and we'll begin uh, reading that again <clears throat> second timothy the first chapter verse number one through six all right we, we ready brother smocks all right very good thank you praise god Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, according to the promise of life which is in Christ Jesus, to Tim Timothy, my dearest beloved son, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Jesus Christ our Lord. I thank God whom I serve from my forefathers with pure conscience that without ceasing I have remembrance of thee in my prayers night and day. <clears throat> Verse number four says, greatly desiring to see thee, being mindful of thy tears, that I may be filled with joy. When I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith that is in thee, which dwelt first in thy grandmother, Louis, and thy mother, Eunice. And I am persuaded that in thee also. Wherefore, I put thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gift of God which is in thee by the putting on of my hand. <clears throat> Church, the tag for this morning's lesson under the series titled, Where is Your Fate? The tag is, A Mother's Hope. A mother's hope. Church, I want you to know that this book was written by the Apostle Paul. And it was written between the years of A.D. 61 through 65. Paul wrote this book from the city of Rome. He was a prisoner. He was one whose freedom was taken away. I want you to know that when Paul wrote this book, he wrote it to a young evangelist by the name of Timotheus. I want you to know that this name, Timotheus, is a name that means to honor God. <clears throat> so, don't want to put any pressure on Timothy Hoover, nor do I want to put any pressure on Timothy Crutchfield, but I want you to know the name that you carry means that one is to honor or giving honor or honoring God. A wonderful name, a profound and prolific name, uh, something to carry on the rest of your life knowing that you and you present yourselves to others you're presenting yourselves by honoring the almighty God. Church, I want you to see verse number five of our text. I will spend most of our time in verse number five and six. Uh, the Bible says in verse number five, when I call to remembrance, I want you to understand what it is that Paul is speaking of when he wrote to Timothy, when he says, 
called to remembrance. He's saying, but Doctor, he's saying that I am mindful. He's saying that I am taking remembrance. But first, he's literally saying, I am taking remembrance. These two Greek words, one taken, the other remembrance, the first is lambano. And lambano means to receive or to take in. So when Paul says taking, he is talking about receiving something. He is talking about taking in something. He uses the word hupanias. And hupanias means under. Uh, we've learned what the word under means when we see the Greek, or rather when we see the Greek word hupa, we know that that word means under. And, and I want you to know this hupanasis, it, it, it means to be under. It, it means to uh, remind, it means to recall or to think about something again. It means to refresh one's memory. So Paul, when he said, I call to remembrance, he's saying that I am taking remembrance. I am lambano. I am hupanisus. He's saying that I want to remind myself or I am recalling myself or I am bringing back to remembrance something that I have stored up in my mind. Church, he says in verse number five, when I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith. I want you to know that this faith that Paul was talking about was a faith that he wanted us to all see. A faith that Timothy displayed in his life. Church, I want you to understand that when he says, I want you to remember, he says, when I call to remember the unfeigned faith that is in thee, which dwelt first in thy grandmother Lois and mother Eunices, I am persuaded that it is in thee also. Verse number six says, wherefore, I put thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gift of God, which is in thee, by putting, by the putting on of my hands. Church, I want you to know that Paul uses this word to stir up. But Fisher, if you get for me, uh, Second Peter, the first chapter, verse number thirteen, and I want you to get uh, Second Peter. The third chapter, verse number one and two, and we're gonna uh, we're gonna look at this word uh, stir up. Uh, I want us to understand exactly what uh, Paul, when he wrote to this young evangelist by the name of Timothy, uh, what he needed to remember, and the purpose of remembering was to stir up the children of God. Uh, you'll be reminded that Peter said the very same words in Second Peter, the first chapter, verse number 13. Read, Brother Fisher. Yea, I think it meek. He said, yea, I think it meek. As long as, as I am long in this tabernacle. As I am in this tabernacle. Read. To stir you up by to putting. To stir you up by putting. You in remembrance. By putting you in remembrance. Read. Knowing that shortly. Knowing that shortly. I must put off. This, I must put off. This tabernacle. This tabernacle. Even as our Lord Jesus. Even as our Lord Jesus. Christ has showed me. As Christ has showed him. Now, now what I want you to understand is that the apostle Peter is saying that as long as he is in this tabernacle as long as he is in this physical body 
as long as he has the strength in his body, as long as he has the breath within his body, Brother Proctor, as long as he has his conscience and is able to think, he's going to stir up to remembrance those things that he had first been taught. Amen. So I, 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 I want to tie this back to a mother's hope. And, and this is the reason why we're here. Uh, because we're going to start talking about uh, that mother. We're going to start talking about that grandmother. Because I want you to know that sometimes men are absent in the lives of their sons and their daughters. I want you to know that sometimes men do not do the things that they ought to do. And, 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 and they are absent even in the present. Even in the proximity. Even in their own homes. Men are absent and do not teach their sons, do not teach their daughters those things that are most important. And the reason why I want you to see that Timothy and Peter were both told to remember those things, to stir up Amen. those. Amen. I want you to know what this word uh, stir up means. This word stir up means to revive. Right. Yeah, that's right. It means to revive. Uh, this word uh, stir up means to rejuvenate it means to re-energize I'm going to tell you this and I'll be honest as I can be sometimes as a preacher sometimes I need to be stirred up brother Jackson somebody needs to stir me up somebody needs to renew me somebody needs to re-energize me somebody needs to rejuvenate me refocus me put some emphasis on some things that I have Forgotten. I've forgotten. I want you to know that there are some men that have forgotten. Men that have forgotten who they are, what they are. Men who have forgotten the responsibility and now we have to put everything on a mother's hope. Peter said as long as he is in this physical body, He's going to stir up those of the body of Christ. Those that have been scattered abroad for the purpose of sharing the word of God to others and also because of the great persecution that they went through. Some men need to be stirred up. There needs to be a renewing in their hearts and their minds and their soul. There needs to be a rejuvenation. There needs to be a refocus on what is most important. Right. As long as he's in this tabernacle. <coughs> See, Brother Fisher, we need some preachers to remember that. That as long as they're in the tabernacle, right. as long as they're in this physical body, as long as they are capable of thinking, as long as they have their right mind, Brother Hunt, as long as they are physical, ca physically capable, as long as they can speak a word to the people, they ought to rejuvenate. They ought to restir up. They ought to stir up to remembrance those things which were learned first. And why is that important? Look at 2 Peter, the third chapter, verse number 1 and 2. I want you to see uh, what Peter now is saying to you all. And he was specifically speaking of himself and the reason why he does what he does in first in 2 Peter, the first chapter, verse number 13. But listen, read. This second epistle. He said this second epistle. Beloved, I now beloved, write unto you. I write now unto you. In both which I stir up. In both which I do what? Stir up. Which I read you when they do what? Stir up. Which I read. Emphasize which I what? Stir up. Renew which I stir up. Read. Your pure mind. Your pure mind. By way of remembrance. By way of remembrance. Read. That ye may be mindful of the that word. you may be mindful of the word. We need some men to be mindful of the word of God. You need to remember what you learned first about the almighty God. Amen. Read. Which was spoken before. Which was spoken before. So, so it's not like you ain't never heard it before. Yeah. Somebody said it to you. Matter of fact, somebody probably said it to you more than once. They said it time and 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 time again. To try to bring men to remembrance. And when you don't, all 
they have to lie on, brother. But proctorism is a mother's hope. So, so read. Spoken before by the holy prophets. Spoken before by the holy prophets. Read. And of the commandments and of us. And of the commandments of who? Us the apostles. Us the apostles. Read. Of the Lord and Savior. Of the Lord and Savior. Somebody has got to be stirred up to remembrance. And I want you to know that when Paul wrote this to uh, this young evangelist, he wanted him not to lose focus, Brother Granger. He wanted him not to lose focus, but he wanted to bring those things back to remembrance for the purpose of stirring up those that were amongst him. So there had to be a stirring up. There had to be a revival. There had to be a rejuvenation. I, I want you to know that 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 that, that uh, uh, this preacher. Uh, I want you to know it this morning. Uh, this preacher is no different uh, than that preacher. Uh, Jeremiah. Turn to Jeremiah, the 20th chapter, uh, verse number 9. I want you to start at verse number 8 because I want you to see something. Uh, that Jeremiah, uh, Jeremiah uh, was, was a prophet uh, who was sent from God uh, to tell the children of Judea, to tell the children of Israel that there was certain doom that was uh, going to come upon them. And, and I want you to know that uh, every chance that Jeremiah had he was talking to someone about re-establishing their relationship with the one God, the only God, the almighty God. Listen to what Jeremiah had to deal with because the folks mocked him every time he opened his mouth. Uh, they ridiculed him every time he uh, said something about God. Uh, some of them were rather than to telling me, tell me a lie instead of tell me, telling me the truth. Read what he said in Jeremiah the 20th chapter, verse number 8 and 9. For since I spoke. He said, for since I spoke. There it is again. See, see, see we got some prophets doing some speaking. Uh, we got some priests doing some speaking. Uh, we got some folks that are prophesying. We got some preachers that are preaching. And he said again, read it again. He said, what? For since I spoke. He said, for since I spoke. Somebody's been doing some speaking speaking and somebody ought to be doing some listening so they can remember read i cried out he said i cried out i cried he, violence and he, spoil he said i cried violence and spoil it's coming read because the word of the lord because the word of the lord was made a reproach was unto made me. a reproach to me read and a derision and, daily in a derision daily read then i said see then i said i will not make mention now, of hold it. on that derision it means that he was being mocked he was being ridiculed the folks were laughing at him every day they were joking at him in our day and time they would be look at that jesus freak all he wants to talk about is jesus mm -hmm. he don't want to go to the clubs with us he don't want to go out drinking with us mm -hmm. he don't want to go out creating ruckus and rampus look at him so he was being ridiculed he was being mocked he was being told that he was nothing and forget about the word of God. Does that remind, hey, listen, church, does that remind you of any day and time that me, me and you are, are living in? Uh, do, do you get that, Brother Jackson? Do folks ridicule you because you speak in the name of Jesus the Christ? Brother Crutchfield, are you ridiculed? Are you mocked just simply because you tell people about the greatness of Jesus the Christ, his death, burial, and his resurrection in the church that he established that brings salvation? Are you ridiculed, oh. Brother, Brother Fisher? Man. Listen to what Jeremiah said, read. Nor speak any more in his name. He said, I ain't speaking no more in God's name. I'm tired of being ridiculed. I'm tired of being mocked. I'm tired of being put down. I'm tired of being laughed at. I'm tired of being told I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm tired of hearing people tell me how stupid, how dumb I am, how senseless it means to speak in the name of God. He said, I'm tired of it, but read. But his word, but his word was in my heart. He said, but his word, he said his word was in my heart. He said his word was shut up in my heart. Read. As a burning fire. As a burning fire. Shut up in my bones. Shut up in my bones. Yeah. And I was weary. He said, and when I was weary. With forbearing. With forbearing. And I could not he say. He said, I could not hold it. 
I had to speak yeah. in this man's name. Yeah, yeah. 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 That's what that word stirring up means. You can't hold it right. in. It becomes a burning desire within your bones and you just want to tell somebody how good God has been to you. That's right. You want to tell somebody about his greatness. You want to tell somebody about that sickness that you went through, that you prayed to the God and he's healed your body. You want to tell somebody about that struggle that you had, that drug addiction that you had, that alcoholism that you had, that addiction with uh, uh, pornography that you had. You want to tell somebody about how great he's been to you. You want to tell somebody how he made a marriage that was doomed the marriage that was on the brink of collapsing and falling to the pieces but that marriage has now been joined together and tightened and you can go back to Genesis the second chapter verse number 23 and 24 and you can live uh, what Moses said when he said husband leave your father and your mother and cleave to your wife that which was two now becomes one isn't that wonderful you go tell somebody about it that fire is in your bone but we're talking this morning we're talking this morning about a mother's a mother's hope uh, because sometimes sometimes we can't get folks to, to remember sometimes brother brother Granger brother Keith Granger sometimes we can't get them to remember no matter how much stirring up we do no matter how much preaching we do no matter how much teaching we do we can't stir them up enough to get them to remember what they learn what they learn first church I want you to take another look at verse number five again when it says when I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith. Paul is talking about this young evangelist by the name of Timothy. And he's talking about his faith. He just didn't say that Timothy was a faithful man. He talked about the type of faith that he had. He said an unfeigned faith. Uh, some of the versions of your Bible may say a sincere faith. I want you to know that this faith that Timothy had was an honest faith. It was a true faith. It was a sincere faith. It was a heartfelt faith. But Proctor, I want you to know that Paul said the type of faith that Timothy had was a real faith. He had a real faith. That's the type of faith that Paul had. Uh, this word, or rather Timothy had, uh, this word unfeigned comes from the Greek word anapokriatos. Anapokriatos. And this word anapokriatos, if uh, you look at it in its Greek form, in its grammatical form. A is a negative prefix meaning without, listen to this, without hupacrineal maya. Without hupacrineal maya. Hupa, as we've learned, means under. It indicates secrecy. It indicates secrecy. And crino means to judge. So anapokriatos, it describes that which is, listen to this, unhypocritical. That's right. Yeah, yeah, you hear that about Crossfield? Unhypocritical. Uh, it's genuine. It, it, it's real. He is or she is not a hypocrite. Uh, I, I want you to understand this. Uh, there's a word uh, that's called a, dissim a dissimilar. And, and that is a synonym of the word hypocrite. I, I want you to know, I, I want you to understand how that word played out. Uh, see, in, in, in Roman and Greek um, uh, 
uh, theater, uh, these actors, uh, they would take these oversized masks, they were extremely large masks to identify, give for me Matthew the 23rd chapter, verse number 27 and 28, uh, uh, to identify the character uh, that they were playing. Uh, note I said, character that they were playing uh, I, I want you to know uh, that there are some folks who are in the church who are not genuine I, I want you to know there are some folks in the church who are not true I, I want you to know that there are some folks in the faith in the church who are not real uh, they are fake I, I want you to know that uh, that's where we get the term uh, uh, well you know he's just or she's just wearing a mask uh, that's an indication of that person is pretend, uh, pretending to be something that he or she is not Amen. Hypo uh, hypocrisy in the church is a disease that eats at the church and causes the church to be stagnant causes the church to be weak causes the church to fall when there are folks who are hypocritical in the church they wear the masks you know in drama in our day and time when you see those two masks one smiling and the other was sad it's called comedy and tragedy and I want you to know that hypocrites in the church those who are hypocritical it is no comedy involved in it and it is indeed a tragedy now why is this important when we're talking about a mother's hope because we're talking about the fate of Timothy an unfeigned faith, a sincere faith, an honest faith, a true faith. It was a real faith. That's what it was. But listen to what Jesus said about the scribes and the Pharisees. Uh, see, we got some scribes and some Pharisees today. Uh, uh, Brother Keith, I've been saying Brother Granger, but it's Brother uh, Granger Keith. Brother Keith, uh, 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 listen, there are some, there's some scribes and Pharisees that exist in the church today. That's right. Yeah, we got modern day scribes, modern day Pharisees. Listen to what Jesus said, read. Woe unto you. He said, Woe unto you. Scribes and Pharisees. You scribes and Pharisees. Hypocrites. You hypocrites. Yeah, yeah. Now, now we just determine what a hypocrite is. It's a person that wears a mask. And the purpose of wearing the mask is to deceive. But I want you to know this morning, I stand on this day to let you know that when that mask comes off, you are the very same person that you were. You may be able to portray that person with that mask on good. You may be excellent. Matter of fact, Brother Hunt, some of us might be able to win an Academy Award for the acting role that we have played. But I want you to know again that that is a tragedy in the church and it stagnates uh, the growth and the development of the church. Read on what Jesus said about these scribes and Pharisees, you hypocrites, read. For you are like whited sepulchers. He said you are like whited sepulchers, read. Which indeed appear beautiful. They the appear outward. beautiful on the outside. But are within full. But within full of, of what? dead men's of bones. Dead men's bones. Dead men's bones. It looks good on the outside. Mm. But I want you to know it's nothing but dead men's bones. Read. And of all uncleanness. And all uncleanness. See, church, that's what a hypocrite is. So, 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 so why is this important to us on this Mother's Day? At this Mother's Day where it's where a mother, where we have a mother's, a mother's hope. Why is this important? Church is important because Timothy's faith was genuine. It was an honest, it was a true faith. But where did Timothy, where did Timothy get 
that type of faith from? I, I, oh, turn over to Acts the 16th chapter, verse number one. I want you to see something. I, I want you to know something. And, and as Brother Fisher is turning there, I want to tell you a story. I want to tell you something, church. In 1966, August the 26th, to be exact, of 1966, my sister, Sister Proctor, and Sister McDaniels, my younger sister, were on a train. And we were coming from Shreveport, Louisiana, being accompanied by our mother. So let me tell you this story. <clears throat> Five years old, seven years old, three years old, we come into Kansas City. I want you to know, church, that the family is in the body of Christ. My grandmother was in the body of Christ. My mother is in the body of Christ. My sister is in the body of Christ. Both of my sisters are in the body of Christ. I am in the body of Christ. But I want you to know being as humble and as transparent as I can be that when I came or when we came to this city we didn't come with a father we came with a mother's hope see I want you to know something about Timothy and then I want you to try to put this together of what that did, what that has to do with me and uh, why I'm speaking about it. Because I want you to know on August the 26th, 1966, we rode into that Union Station on a train because my grandmother said she was leaving Shreveport, Louisiana. And my mother said, you're not going without us. So as honest and as transparent as I can be, my father is not in the body of Christ. So I'm trying to give you a parallel between me and that young evangelist by the name of Timotheus. Read Acts the 16th chapter verse number 1. Then came he to Derby and Lystra. He, he said, Then came he to Derby and Lystra. And behold, and behold, a certain disciple was there. A certain disciple was there. Named Timotheus. Named Timotheus, read. The son of a certain woman. The son of a certain woman. Which was a Jewish. She was a Jewish. Listen to this. And believed. And believed. She was in the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. She heard, believed, repented, confessed, and she was baptized into the church that Jesus Christ saved. Amen. Read. But his father. But. His father. Was a Greek. Was a Greek. He wasn't in the body of Christ. He was not in the kingdom of God. He was not amongst those who called on the name of Jesus. He was not in the church that you can read about in the Bible. So now, I hope that you can put it together. I hope that you can understand why there has to be a mother's a mother's hope because sometimes us men we don't do what we supposed to do that's right and we got to rely on a mother's hope go back to second timothy the first chapter and i want you to go back to verse number five and i want you to learn something about this woman, Lois, and this woman, 
you nices. And I want you to see how important it is. You single, you single mothers, I want you to see how important it is that you hang on, on. Yeah. to the almighty hand of God. And there's a mother's hope that all of us are praying for. Read what Timothy said to, or read what Paul said to Timothy again. Read. What I call to remembrance the He's, unfeigned faith. The unfeigned faith. That is in thee. That is in thee. Now stop right there. It's in Timothy. Well, hunt, you listen to it? It's in Timothy. Yes. 